If you be the cash, I be the rubber band. Uh, <clears throat> okay. If you be the cash, I be the rubber band. You be the match, I will be a fuse. That's a lot of teeth. For real though, there's actually six front teeth right there in the front. There's only supposed to be four. And how does she even close her lips? Well, I'll tell you how. It's because they're fake. Even though there is this thing called hyperdontia, that means you have extra teeth. This girl just, she's just faking it. These are just snap on Bubba teeth from the Dollar Tree. That means that if this was a real case, we would have to pull two of the extra teeth and then use braces to get everything straight again. Did you brush his right? And I think we need to have a, a giant public service announcement out there for all the kids because I see this literally every day. A lot of you guys are going into high school, you're 14, 15, 16, 17, and you know what? You're gonna have your first girlfriend and you're probably, even if you're lucky enough, having your first kiss. And it just blows my mind with what some of you guys come in here with. You haven't brushed in a week, you haven't flossed, you got food sitting there from three weeks ago where you had that one hot taki that you weren't supposed to have, it's all caked up inside your bracket, and you know what? It smells. And it's one thing as a dental professional, or orthodontist, you know, I see this stuff every day, I understand it, but I always think back at like, like, what do you do at school? Do people not tell you that, hey, you got gunk all up in your teeth? Or hey, you got stanky breath? Or hey, that's just like kind of gross in general? And what about the guys that have girlfriends? Because you guys come in with your girlfriends, I see it. You guys, your mom's talking about how you just got your first girlfriend, you went on your first date. And all I'm thinking about is I hope he didn't get close because he's not gonna have a girlfriend for long. But for real though, maybe it's, you know, it's a father-son talk or something. Maybe you guys, some of you guys don't have dads out there. So I'm gonna have that talk with you, okay? So we gotta have proper oral hygiene, okay? Especially, if you're doing the lip locking, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you brush your teeth, take care of them, floss, not only because you're not gonna get cavities and root canals and you know periodontal issues and bone loss, but you know, just for the sake of just, you know, being a normal person, okay? I'd appreciate that. So brush your teeth and keep that breast smelling good, and you'll probably keep that girlfriend for a little bit longer, at least until you have your first heartbreak, and then we're gonna have to make another video about it. These are snacks from a mystery country, and this is a braces bracket. If you're new, I've been whitening this braces bracket for months now to see if it leaves behind a yellow square or not. And our job is to try and break this bracket off to see what lies underneath. Ooh, I'm not gonna lie, even I don't know what these snacks are. Let me know if you can figure out the country down below. First up, we have Smokey, uh, fresh baked peanuts. Let's go ahead and try it out. I like some nuts in your mouth. It's still there! Dorina Keck Bar might do the trick. Looks like chocolate with cookies in it. Hold on a second. Okay, I open it up and it, it, does that chocolate mold? Is that, should I eat this? Where if I get sick because of you guys, you owe me. Mmm, tasty. Actually, I might taste the mold. Anyways, ah, it's still there. This Kiki Tutti Fruity should definitely do the trick. And here we go. Ah, ah. Oh, I think I broke my teeth. Ah, it's still there. How can this keep happening? <laughs> These mystery country snacks were no match for the braces bracket. So let me know what I need to try next because I was clenching my jaw that whole time. But Bentis, what does she mean by that your teeth aren't supposed to touch each other? I don't understand. Well, that's because, well, your teeth are supposed to touch each other some points and they aren't supposed to touch each other other points. You see, if your teeth are always touching, that's what we consider clenching. And clenching can have a lot of bad effects. If you clench all the time, those muscles are always active and those muscles will tighten up, the back of your neck will tighten up, you'll end up having TMJ, headache, migraine issues, everything in between. But Bentis, it's happening, I don't even know that it's happening. Happening. Why is this going on? Well, most of the time, clenching disorders and things are actually neuromuscular, meaning that they're just brain issues normally from anxiety. And we saw a big rise of this happening in 14 and 15 year olds, and we used to think, hmm, maybe it's braces related. But really, we found out that it was just anxiety related. Because in eighth grade to high school and everything else in between, you end up getting, you know, your first girlfriends, your first fights, you got social things going on, and you know what? It causes a lot of what? anxiety and that causes you to start clenching and having TMJ issues. But don't worry though, you go off into the rest of your adult life having the same issue. But Bentis, is there anything I can do about it? Well yeah, actually there is a couple things you can do about it. One is kind of like her, anytime during the day you can have something, a little rubber band or something that reminds you to check your jaw and then anytime you think about it, you're like, oh I'm clenching. 
and then relax. So make sure you completely fully relax and that'll kind of get you into a good spot. Over time, hopefully your body will learn to not go ahead and clinch all the time. Another thing that you can do because you can't really control your clinching at night is get a night guard. So when you're clinching, you're not actually damaging your teeth. The reason why this is important is because while you're sleeping, your teeth are actually like a hundred times more powerful because you can't feel the force that you're putting on them because you're asleep and you can really damage and crack those teeth over time. So relax, the next time you're in school or at work, just relax those shoulders, relax those jaws, take a chill pill, and keep those teeth healthy for the rest of your life. <laughs> And it's that time of the year where you guys send me icicle eating videos. And I'm sure a bunch of you guys are expecting me to say, don't eat that ice because it's going to crack your teeth off. And yes, it will, but that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is sensitivity because a lot of people's teeth get more sensitive in the winter time because of that cold hitting your teeth. And I think it's interesting to let people know exactly why they have their sensitivity. Because most of the time, it's nothing that you did. It's actually probably genetic. Yeah, that's right. Genetic. Just like we have different skin colors, different facial structures, different ethnicities, we have have different teeth makeups. And if you look at the teeth between different races, you actually will see some differences. Because there's some ethnicity of races like Native American, Hispanic, Pacific Islanders, and Asians that actually have a lot thicker enamel. In fact, they often have so much thick enamel that they have what we call shovel-shaped incisors. And if you look at them, they have so much thick enamel that it actually wraps around the tooth. Whereas if you look at other races like Caucasian or something like that, we normally have thinner, more thin enamel that's more straight. Now it doesn't just stop at teeth as well. I mean, you can have bone densities too. A lot of the times African Americans have denser bone than a Caucasian does. So everybody has different facial structures and teeth. And in those people with thicker teeth, they normally have a lot more enamel to protect their nerve and insulate it. So a lot of times when we're drilling on them or we're doing stuff, they don't get sensitive ever at all. And if you look at somebody with a thin enamel biotype like me, unfortunately, we have really thin flat teeth. And so it's a lot easier to get that cold to penetrate into the nerve tissue. Now that's one way you can have sensitivity that you're completely out of control of, but there's also another one. If you brush really hard or you don't take care of your teeth, your gum tissue will actually go down. Same with your bone levels, revealing the roots of your teeth. Now normally your roots are covered by bone and gum tissue, but over time if it drops, it exposes them. And those tubules in the root are way bigger. So think of it like if your nerve was protected by a shield. Your enamel has all these little tiny microscopic holes that make that water come in and it hits it. And it's really hard to get through those tiny little holes that reach all the way into your nerve. Your root holes are actually about 10 to 100 times bigger. So that's like having these big holes in between the shield and the water can just rush in and go directly to the nerve. That's why root pain is so bad and people have such sensitivity around the roots that it can cause a lot of issues. So next time you're chomping on ice or drinking some cold water and have some sensitivity, more than likely it was your parents' fault and the genetics that you have that made your teeth enamel thicker or thinner than somebody else. Hope that helps. I swear if this turns into an ASMR reaction channel, I'm gonna be so mad at you. Why you guys keep tagging me in this? Why is he eating gummy? Oh, really? That's the grossest sound. Why do people like this? But yes, it's safe for your teeth, okay? <laughs> Just please get it out of my face. Gummy eyeballs, also safe. At least tag me in some stuff that's bad for your teeth and braces. Just gross. Ooh, that actually kind of looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. It reminds me of those little donut holes you get at Top Golf. Those things are good. Sour belts. Honestly, some of my favorite candy ever. I'm pretty sure. Shout out sour candy pizza. These are all soft. All good for your teeth. Okay. I'm tired of watching this guy eat. It's gross. Is that moldy cheese? Oh, it's a rock. rock. Actually, probably not too good for your teeth. I probably wouldn't eat this. Oh, what are the pineapple? Just right into the pineapple. Come on, guys. Get some help. Oh, pink. Well, that's one way to use your tongue. Well, for the dentist, what is going on here? Well, obviously this is a body modification called a split tongue. And if you didn't know that your body forms in two halves, and so those two pieces of your body come together in one, forming a midline down your mouth. Now you can see this in the roof of your mouth or the palate. That's why when you do an expander, it actually expands away the two pieces of your jaw, leaving a big gap between your teeth. But the tongue is actually the same way. And so these two pieces of tongue that are split can actually be moved completely separately. Now, another thing cool about the 
tongue is kind of interesting if, is if you look at anything in the room, I don't care what you look at, you look at the floor, you look at that thing, you look at this, you know what it feels like to lick it. I don't know why. If it's felt, plastic, metal, a paper, you know, for some reason, you know what everything feels like if you would lick it. You know, the tongue is just a crazy muscle now that you think about it. And now anytime I see a straw, I'm just, well, think of this video. Great. Uh, fun fact, did you know that lemons and oranges actually ruined my teeth as a kid? I would eat oranges all the time and I would bite into them and I sucked the juice out. It was amazing. I loved oranges. That wasn't until we found out that they were eroding my teeth with acid. That's right, acid. If you didn't know lemons, oranges, all that, they are very acidic. And if you bite into them and eat them, they're gonna acid erode your teeth over time if you're doing it excessively like I was. And not only does it wear your enamel away, specifically on the lower teeth where you're biting into it, it actually is something really bad if you brush your teeth directly after because the acid softens your enamel. And that softening of the enamel when you brush your teeth with an abrasive toothpaste or something can actually wear away your enamel even faster. I don't want to scare you on oranges, just don't eat them as much as I did. Maybe just don't go biting into lemons like this. All right, you guys tag me again in another, holy moly, that's a lot of calculus. Okay, so what we're using here is a piezoelectric scaler. It's like a little mini jackhammer that will actually jackhammer off that calculus. And you can see that kind of big chalky looking yellow stuff, that's the calculus buildup. Plaque turns calculus in about 24 to 48 hours in a thin layer. And then that thin layer builds up over time into this big, cakey, hard, cement-like stuff. And so you can see they're just chopping it away at a little bit. Super satisfying. One of my funnest things to do in school. I love doing this type of stuff. So obviously this one's pretty severe because it's it's obviously a big... Oh my gosh, look at that huge chunk that came off. You can even see how much irritation it is underneath there. You see that redness on the... Um, on the gum tissue, that's the irritation. That irritation actually irritates the bone and causes the bone to dissolve, causing periodontal issues. So if you don't want this, then we'll make sure to brush your teeth and floss, okay? I think you can do that for me. My dentist just told me that I have tongue cancer and that I'm gonna have to do a bunch of testing and they're gonna have to do a biopsy of my tongue. I just thought I had a geographical tongue. <laughs> cancer? Did she say cancer? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. Well, the good news is more than likely this is not cancer, not at least from what I see. Now, that being said, the dentist could be seeing something completely different than I see, so make sure you do talk to your dental professional about this. But from what I'm seeing, I see two things going on with this girl's tongue. One is actually a mild case of exactly what she said, geographical tongue, or also known as benign migratory glossitis. I know, big words. Well, basically, it's an inflammatory symptom that basically causes these little red patches and white stuff on your tongue that kind of moves in different areas and it it can also kind of burn sometimes and it can be painful sometimes now for treatment normally they just kind of go away on their own and the reason why you call them geographical tongue is because when they heal up one place they move to another place and yes they can be pretty annoying now the other thing that I see people in the comments talking about is the waves on their tongue they're like oh maybe it's the waves that's the cancer and no that's actually not it either that's just from basically like sucking your tongue up against the roof of your mouth and clenching at nine and pushing your tongue up against those teeth and so those ridges are just the indentions of your teeth from your tongue sitting up against those teeth for so long. So not sure what your dentist is seeing here, but then again, like I said, maybe there's something else that they're seeing. Maybe it's under the tongue. Maybe it's in a different spot. Maybe they are seeing something because of the geographic tongue that concerns them. So it is always a good idea if your dentist is telling you about something like this, go ahead and get a biopsy or something or whatever like that. It is always safe to know for sure what's going on. But more than likely from what I see, your tongue is completely normal than a few little geographic tongue and maybe some tongue intentions. People are wanting to know how the color corrector works. Explain it in 30 seconds. I got it. Time to review this thing and see if it's capped or fact or whatever they're calling it these days. We're gonna test this by putting it on one half of my mouth, seeing the difference and see if it really whitened my teeth at all. This little bottle cost me like 40 bucks. So this better work. All right, now I'm being vulnerable here, but here are what my teeth look like. Yes, I still got the racket, but they're not too yellow, but they're not like super white either. Okay, here's what it looks like. It's, oh man, that is some dark purple. Here we go. Oh man, this is gross. It is very minty. It, it does, uh, uh, we'll see. It's doing something. Let's add some more, just a, just a like, sir. 30 seconds. Well, this is great. My finger is now stained purple. And time for the reveal. Yeah, it didn't work. Well, what do you know? Another scam is a scam. For those who already bought this, I'm sorry. 